Hey everybody, how's it going? I thought I'd give you an update on the homestead. It's April 2020, right in the middle of this Rona epidemic, pandemic. And uh, let's start with the main garden at the house. Now this arbor is two different varieties of grapes. They're southern grapes called muscadines. On the left is an early fruiting variety called early fry. And on the right, going about 20 feet out, that's a late fruiting variety called late fry. And then down there by my compost heap, right there, I've got a whole bunch of lemon balm and I use that for cooking, basically like a substitute for lemongrass. All right, let's go in and see what I'm growing. I've got oregano in a box. I've got two types of mint for my mojitos and there's some garlic, but I'll return to that in a minute. Over here, I've got the first time trying horseradish. Yeah, so this is one root of horseradish and then an old rosemary bush. Over here, I brought out some seedlings from the greenhouse. These are tobacco. Yeah, I use tobacco and I'm gonna try growing those. And then, let's see, these are eggplants that I, st all of this is from seed, all of it. Okay, here's a little basil that is suffering a little bit from some insects and trying to acclimate to the full sun from the greenhouse. I've got green onions, cilantro, which I deliberately let go to flower for the pollinators. You know, they need stuff to eat too. There's another basil. Remember that the cilantro is going to die as soon as it heats up. In fact, it's already bolting. So then the replacement plants will be these basils, which, you know, they'll get three feet high. Continuing down the raised bed, I've got parsley. I use this all the time, all the time. Oh my God. Now, how about this? Anybody know? This is nasturtium. And it's a flower, not flowering yet, but they're edible flowers, which is kind of cool. Okay, now I did more nasturtium here. You see they're starting to grow. And then some zinnia type flowers. This is sorghum, sorghum, which is millet. I'm going to plant more of that. That was an experiment. This right here, flowers, various assorted flowers that aren't sprouted yet. Two more horseradishes. This is African daisy, Gerbera daisy. Got some more flower seeds. Look at this. Okay, my pollinators. I like to encourage the pollinators. Look at the dianthus. Now these open up during the day. Uh, this is yarrow, but basically the pollinators come in and then they go to my crops to go ahead and pollinate those. More cilantro, more cilantro, more flower seeds. I think I did cosmos down here. Okay, now don't judge me, but these just got transplanted. They're adjusting, but these are cucumbers. I'm gonna climb up here. I've got rows of sunflowers that have just sprouted. So this whole back wall will be sunflowers. Here's my yellow squashes and zucchinis. You see some are more advanced than others. Again, it's pretty early. Normally I wouldn't plant this early, but I always like to get the first produce of the year before everybody else. Okay, from right to left, this is mescloon, which is French for mixture. That's a mixture of salad greens. Then I've got black seeded Simpson lettuce that hasn't sprouted yet. I've got arugula, also known as rocket, hasn't sprouted yet. And I've got a bed of radishes. I actually just harvested radishes from this bed. And so it's like a rotational type of thing. If you follow my videos, you've probably seen the one I just made about these folding trellises. This is to support these little guys, which don't let their size fool you. They're gonna grow and cover this entire thing. And those are yard long beans. They're about maybe 18 inches, like, like a green bean. Okay, let's continue through here. These are green onions that I let grow. And you could still eat some of these small ones like this. You could eat that. But again, I let them go to flower for the sake of the insect pollinators. Also, you can eat this. This is called a scape when it's an unopened flower. You can break this off and eat it. it. Just tastes like an onion. All right, here's more sunflowers. Yeah, big shadow, huh? All right, let's continue here before we move on. I've got four basil plants, just typical broadleaf basil, started from seed. I've got my curly kale. Man, I love kale, eat it all the time. Look at this, more cilantro. I'm probably gonna go ahead and freeze some of this. 
I've got rainbow chard. Now this, this is collards, but I let them go to flower just for the bees. Look at so many bees. Okay, you gotta remember your pollinators. Down here, these are a variety of hot peppers. I, I mean, I don't even know what they are. I just mixed a whole bunch of seeds, habaneros, cayenne, etc. These specifically are cayenne seedlings from seed. How about this? Anybody know? That's garlic. So easy. You just take a garlic bulb, put it in the ground. Just a clove, not a bulb, a clove. Each one of these will make a bulb. All right, at this end of the garden, more chard. I eat a lot of chard. It's like spinach. Um, okay, tomato, 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 uh, basil. Got a little rogue basil I stuck in there. Now these are brandy wine, which are my favorite. Love brandy wines, but you don't get too many tomatoes. These are romas, which are gonna be good for cooking. Here's my snow peas. I've got different stages of them so that they don't all basically ripen at once. Got another cucumber. Got green peppers, bell peppers. And then, let's see, I already showed you the kale. I've got more peppers. These are yellow banana peppers. I do a lot of hot sauce, I do a lot of cooking. Can't get enough peppers. And coming up here, we've got more brandy wines, brandy wines, brandy wines. Obviously a favorite of mine. Got some more green onions, these are from seed. How about dill? Yeah, these are gonna be mammoth dill. So it'll be like this high with another chard. Dill, 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 cilantro. Oh, what's this? Cleome, love the Cleome flower. That's a volunteer growing in a potted pineapple that has produced two pineapples so far. It's like three years old. And that's not including the original pineapple that it came from. So that's this garden. Let's go check out my other garden. So obviously I've put a lot of work into this recently. I've got one row of potatoes right there. This is another row of potatoes. And what you do with potatoes is you plant them and as they emerge, you keep covering them. So these are the leaves, but you keep covering them multiple times and that'll get the best yield. Here I have another trellis for my yard long beans. You notice they just sprouted. There we go. Now I've got three types of full size onions. I've got red, yellow, and white onions. Here's a bunch of regular beans, like, you know, green beans, yellow beans, wax beans, I guess they call them. Um, more onions. And you remember my video about cat litter and compost gardening? So this is cat litter, pine shaving cat litter, pine pellet cat litter that I've composted. And I've added compost, which is why you have these eggshells from our chicken eggs. Okay, so this is my first year not only trying the cat litter compost, but putting things in these raised beds. So my vision is raised beds, raised beds, raised beds, all the way down there, because it's been very wet in recent years. Now, here is, yes, my lovely hoop house. I've got another video showing how to make the hoop house. And I've had tomatoes in here for a while. So let's see. This is a cute little cherry tomato. Okay, I think it's called tiny tots or something. And then these, look at these. Now, admittedly, I bought these. I bought these. These are hybrids, better boys, because they're resistant to fungus, they're resistant to virus. So these are gonna be my standalone hybrid tomatoes. The other ones are heirloom, and I separate them just, this is my guarantee. This is my guarantee for tomatoes early. The other ones, eh, sometimes they don't work. Okay, these are blackberries. See, they're in flower. So again, gotta count on your pollinators. Got blackberries. And this is a corn patch that, sure, I still have some silver queen corn, but this entire thing had the better part of uh, eight rows of corn and crows came in and plucked almost every damn one up. Uh, so I replanted and I put this this welded wire, try to keep the crows out of it. Man, all right. You guys recognize this? There's more cat litter, obviously, but this is asparagus. Now, when they get to be about pencil thin, you stop harvesting, you let them grow. So 
this has already been pretty much eaten. Um, so I'm gonna let it go ahead and grow because you need these plants to photosynthesize to basically provide nutrition for the roots. All right, let's go over here. Notice my shadow. I'm a big fan of raised beds now. I just mulched this with goat hay. That is hay that the goats dropped on the floor, urinated on, defecated on. Instead of wasting it, it makes awesome mulch. Now, this is a thorny variety of blackberry, and it's okay, but last year, normally I don't like thornless varieties, but this is a thornless variety. Okay, the stem's fine. And this baby went gangbusters last year. Look at, these are loaded. Uh, I forget, I think it's Freedom or Liberty or something like that. But uh, Lowe's, you know, just got a few plants. Okay, this is sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes will not emerge probably until May. Now, here's another view of the vineyard. And turn around. This. This is going to be my melon and cantaloupe patch. So watermelons, cantaloupes, probably do some acorn squash, probably do some butternut squash. And this is again, check this out. This is cat shit. I mean, it's broken down, it's composted. But look at that, look at that. Now I know there's weeds, I know that there's weeds, but what'll happen is I'll mulch it heavily when I plant those, and that should take care of those. All right, let's go look at some fruits. Obviously, you know these are blueberries, even though they're not blue yet. But we got a good crop, got an 80 foot row of those. Now these, you might wonder, these are catalpa trees. I grow these just for the caterpillars that grow on them called catalpa worms. They, I mean, they're great for fishing. Look at my videos on catalpa worms. I stuck in one of my little rosemary bushes out here. These are my pears. Now, this apple tree has seen better days. I'm gonna give it one more chance. See if it can actually hold up, stay alive, and produce apples. This is the culprit. Anybody know? Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Look at they just destroy it. And then what that does, uh, the holes basically drip sap, but it's not the sapsucker that kills it, it's the bacteria that get in those holes. Here I got pear trees. Now, they haven't set fruit, but they were in flower recently. Get some pears. This is a persimmon tree. Um, the flowers are not showy, but if you've never had persimmons, those are awesome. I've got a white crepe myrtle out here just to flower for the bees. Now, citrus. I'm trying citrus again. This is a local farm, and this one is called citrandarin. It's like a mandarin orange. That's supposed to be able to tolerate freezing temperatures. This one here, this one's doing better. This one is citromello. Okay, that's again, these aren't oranges per se, but they're citrus and they're really good for juice. I also have a Meyer lemon, a Persian lime. Uh, I think I have a key lime up in the greenhouse. Those have to stay basically really warm. Here's another catalpa. Look at the blueberries, right? Now, blueberry sizes differ depending on the variety, but you want multiple varieties for cross-pollination. So that's pretty much all the outdoor plants. I've also got another greenhouse where I'm doing mostly seedlings, so I'm starting stuff from seeds. I'll probably do a follow-up video later, and um, as you can tell, I love my gardens. It's an exciting time of year. I hope you get out and try even a simple tomato plant or a cucumber, anything. Right now in this coronavirus pandemic, a lot of people are contacting me about gardening. Hey, I've been doing this literally my whole life. But if you're just getting started, comment, shoot me an email. I'm sure you can find my email. My name is Greg Pryor and I work at FMU. That's Francis Marion University. You can find my email there. I'd be happy to talk to you guys about gardening. So, for the time being, I'm going to get going. This is kind of a long video, but peace out. <laughs> Try to get back to basics. Remember what's important and have fun.